ill at the time and is not here. Um, I uh, would like to uh, just have a moment of silence to commemorate or uh, remember uh, the victims of the uh, uh, Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut. Uh, our hearts and prayers go out with them, with the family and members. Thank you. Uh, first item on the agenda is a uh, comments from the board members. I have no comments this time. Staff. Um, I do have. I do have one. Um, I have some sad news in our office. Um, Liz Klotz is going to be leaving. Um, she is from um, the San Jose area and has a one-year-old. And as you can imagine, the family would like to have her a little bit closer. And so she has taken a job with the San Jose City Attorney's Office. And she'll be leaving with claw marks. I was trying to hold her here. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but we will, we will miss her. Good. Um, Sessor comments? None. Everything's running smoothly. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, we uh, have some housekeeping issues that uh, uh, we'll uh, get to uh, with um, agenda item number two. Uh, the assessor has a stipulation that, okay, that you'd like to read in. Uh, what is the nature of this, of this case? Um, this is for California Dairies, Correct. and they had some problems with equipment that they had purchased overseas. One of the issues was um, we did an audit, and some of the deposits on that equipment were picked up during the audit, but the equipment hadn't come into the country yet. They were just the deposits the company had made. And so part of the stipulation is to reverse those deposits. Um, another issue they had is there was three fires at the plant because of faulty equipment, but kind of the same equipment. Um, once they got it installed, they started having problems with it as far as uh, it wasn't producing correctly. It was, there was um, deposits being left on the top of the equipment that was leading to fires, and they couldn't produce the type of uh, milk products that they had intended and was the reason for purchasing that equipment, and it's gonna cost them about $10 million to repair it. So that's the basis of. Okay. If you'd like to uh, then um, uh, the clerk read in, first of all, I guess we'll uh, swear in the assessor. No, no, there's no. No, there's no, no, no need to do that yet, only hearing. if we're gonna be hearing any uh, right. uh, testimony later on. Okay, so. Uh, then uh, if the uh, clerk will go ahead and read in the uh, applications. Number two on the calendar, California Dairies, application number 2010-01140, assessment number 077-111-030-000, and it's a 2009. Um, regular year is that right no and it's, a, it's in a 2009 escape year we have application number 2010-01141 assessment number 077110300000 and that's an, an escape for 2008 application number 2010-01142 one zero three zero 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 and that's an escape for 2007 then we have application number 2010 zero zero five five three assessment number zero seven seven one 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 zero three zero 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 and that's a regular for 2010 and application number 2011 zero zero six six five Assessment number 077-111-030-000, and that's a regular filing for 2011. Okay, the assessor, go ahead and read in the uh, stipulation. 
I did, I prepared the stipulations in order of year. Is, is that okay to read them in that way or would you prefer that I read them in by application? That'd be fine. Okay, for the 2007 year, application number 2010-01142, assessment number 077-111-030-000, Land, 3,660,270. Structural improvements, 5,170,380. Personal property, 17,677,104. With a net taxable value of 26,507,754. For the 2008 year, application number 2010-01141. Assessment number 077-111-030-000, land 3,733,475, structural improvements 12,391,298, personal property 94,657,563, net taxable value 110,782,336. The 2009 year application number 2010-01140, assessment number 077-111-030-000, land is at 3,808,145, structural improvements 13,951,865, fixed improvements 68,053,023, Personal property, 52,519, I'm sorry, 52,519,418. Net taxable value, 138,332,451. And for the 2010 year, application number 2010-00553, assessment number 077-111-030-000. Land, 3,799,091. Structural improvements, 15,332,829. Fixed improvements, 119,466,308. Personal property, 959,766. Net taxable value, 139,557,994. <clears throat> For the 2011 year, application number 2011-00665, assessment number 077-111-030-000, land 3,827,698, structural improvements 15,978,737, Fixed improvements, $124,559,009. Personal property, $1,075,881, with a net taxable value of $145,441,325. Okay, uh, we have stipulation read in. Do I hear a motion to accept the stipulation as read by the assessor? I'll make a motion to accept it. I have a second? A second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, agenda item number three. Uh, is this part of the same property as it's, agenda item two? It's the same ownership, basically. Different corporations, but similar ownership. Um, this property, the one that I previously read, is the one out on Plaza Drive. Yes. Uh, this one is down in Tipton area. Okay. Okay, um, I assume that this, uh, what was the nature of this, this case, this, agenda item three? This is similar, a similar situation as far as machinery not working um, as it's intended, uh, manufacturing difficulties, and also um, some economic obsolescence issues that came into play because of fuel prices, and the company was not able to transport some of um, the milk at a cost that, you know, made a profit for them. Okay. Uh, this, uh, clerk, go ahead and read in the uh, applications. 
Item three on the calendar is California Milk Producers, application number 20100148, assessment number 300010011, and escape for 2009, application number 2010-01149, assessment number 300010011000, that's an escape for 2008. Application number 2010-01150, assessment number 300-010-011-000, and escape for 2007. And application number 2010-01151, assessment number 300-010-011-000, escape for 2006. There's also application number 2010-00552, assessment number 300-010-011-000, and that's for the regular roll year 2010, and or, sorry, application number 2011-00425, assessment number 300-010-011-000, and that's a regular for 2011. Okay. And uh, the auditor, or uh, the assessor, uh, read in your stipulation. For California milk producers, application number 2010-01151, assessment number 300-010-011-000, land at 939734 structural improvements, 14143482 fixed improvements, 48165599 Personal property, 9619980 The net taxable value, 72868795 For the 2007 year, application number 2010-01150, assessment number 300-010-011-000. Land, 958535 Structural improvements, 14,456,199. Fixed improvements, 54,426,387. Personal property, 1,911,756, with a net taxable value of 71,752,877. For the 2008 year, application number 2010-01149, assessment number 300-010-011-000. Land, 977,706. Structural improvements, 14,745,323. Fixed improvements, 51,719,302. And 12, I'm sorry. Um, fixed improvements, let me do that again. 51,719,312. Personal property, 2,797,099. Net taxable value seventy million two thirty nine four hundred and forty. And for two thousand nine, application number two thousand ten dash zero one one four eight, assessment number three hundred O one O O one one Zero 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 Land at nine hundred ninety seven thousand two hundred and sixty. Structural improvements fifteen million O forty two twenty nine. Fixed improvements, 52,118,077. Personal property, 1,322,704. The net taxable value of 69,478,270. For the 2010 year, application 2010-00552, assessment number 300-010-011-000, land, 994,896. Structural improvements, 15,004,584. Fixed improvements, 49,696,294. Personal property, 478,760. Net taxable value, 66,174,534. Two thousand eleven year application number two thousand eleven dash zero zero four two five assessment number three hundred dash O one O O one one dash zero 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 land one million two thousand three hundred and eighty eight 
structural improvements, 15,222,215. Fixed improvements, 40,082,289. Personal property, 558,950. Net taxable value, 56865842 Okay. We have a uh, stipulation as written by the assessor. Uh, do I hear a motion to accept stipulation? On agenda item number six, I move that we accept the stipulation as presented by the assessor. Agenda item number three. Three, I'm sorry. Okay. Six. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. I have one more stipulation. Agenda item number four, uh, Aguilar Dairy. Uh, and may I ask again what the what the nature of the case is? Um, the dairy was involved. The dairy is basically shut down. There's no operations at that dairy. A lot of the equipment had been stolen out of the dairy, and this is actually a stipulation on real property and the fixed improvements. Um, they put their cows into a a retirement program where they terminated the cows and so now the only thing they're doing at that location is um, renting out for feeding renting out some of the land for feeding so. okay uh, if the assessor is going to be reading in the application and APN numbers is it still necessary for the clerk to read them in there are no rules in the statutes or statewide rules about how you um, the process of approving stipulations you can use any process you want. okay then I think then it, the, we'll just go ahead and have the assessor read in the application and APN numbers okay. a little bit quicker okay this is for um, Aguirre Daniel M and Kathleen M T trust uh, application number 2010-00870 assessment number 236-240-008-000 Land is at 243,543. Structural improvements, 485,668. The fixed improvements are 112,548. Personal property, 24,391. The net taxable value of 866,150. And then for the 2011 year, application number 2011-00349. Assessment number 236-240-008-000. Land is at 242,981. Structural improvements, 484,648. Fixed improvements, 105,230. Personal property, 22,456. With a net taxable value of $855,315. Okay. You have a stipulation uh, presented uh, by the assessor. You have a motion to accept stipulation. I'll make a motion to accept the stipulation. And a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, now, regarding uh, the withdrawal calendar and the remaining items on the agenda, uh, if, if I could ask what applicants are here ready to go with their cases, in the audience I believe item number 18 is here number 18 and uh, any others just fruit patch okay. okay then I think what we'll do then is go down to uh, agenda item number 18 and hear your case and someone else might come in afterwards uh, that is scheduled as far as we know is this the only confirmed case that we're applicant to we're going to be hearing okay then if uh, somebody representing uh, fruit patch Inc would step forward <coughs> sure go right ahead
paper. Do you want to proceed to get it? We can do that. Then we, we won't stipulate. Okay, is the applicant uh, prepared to continue with your application? Uh, yes. Okay, then I'll have the clerk uh, swear you and uh, those making uh, statements uh, and the assessor so we'll have all of you sworn in together. I solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give in the matter now pending before the Assessment Appeals Board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please state your name for the record. Uh, Wayne Bruce. Spell it, please. W A Y N E B O O S. Leah Lee. It's uh, L I A L E E. Okay. Uh, at the, this uh, time, state the. the I'm, I'm uh, sorry. Can, can we wait? Can we? Can I pause just for a minute? Is the assessor requesting findings? Oh. Yes. <laughs> Back, let me go down to 18 and get my paperwork out. The oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. Did the applicant pay the fee? There, you have to pay a fee. Pay it, I don't remember. I don't have record of payment. <coughs> the, um, if you want to take an assessment appeals board decision on to court, then you have to ask the board to make findings. Applicant has to pay a fee to do that. We don't make the assessor pay the fee. So if you think you might be unhappy with the decision and want to take it to court, then you would have to pay a fee. I just couldn't remember if we paid it last time or not. Um, I was trying to remember and I don't recall. Mm -hmm. So can we pay it now or later? You, or? We have to pay it before the hearing starts. Are you right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. For each application, it would be 250. Oh, I can't pay that. For each application? Okay, we will, we'll waive that. Okay. okay, because if you don't pay it and the decision goes against you, then you can't go to court with it. You'd have to be satisfied with what th this farm does. Okay. Okay. Again, uh, if you would uh, give us the nature of the case, the uh, uh, value that um, the assessor has on your property and the value that you have stated on your request, uh, go ahead and have the clerk, if you would do that for us. Mr. Chairman, application number 2009-01428, assessment number 029-120-015-000. Fruit Patch is appealing a regular assessment for, for roll year 2009. The, assessors, the assessed value, as it appears on the roll, is 23 million eighty two three hundred and ninety eight. And the applicant's opinion is two million three hundred eight three hundred and eight thousand two hundred and forty. Application number two thousand ten zero zero eight eight one assessment number zero two nine zero sorry one two zero zero one five zero zero zero. They're appealing the regular assessment year two thousand ten. The assessed value on the roll is twenty one million. Six hundred eighty-six thousand five hundred and eighty-nine, and the applicant's opinion is two million one hundred sixty-eight thousand six hundred and fifty-nine. Very good. Um, and what is the the case about in general? Um, fruit Patch is a true fruit um, packing uh, and sales facility, 
and just due to the general decline in the tree fruit industry, um, the applicant is requesting a, a reduction to the valuation. Okay, go ahead and present your case. Um, this this case, the, the taxpayer also has um, the following years under uh, either audit or additional appeals um, besides the 2009, just as information, a taxpayer is, is appealing the audit findings for 2005, 2006, 2007, and 2008, and um, the um, applicant is also appealing 2011 and 2012. Um, I asked Ms. Lee if they would, we could do a continuance of this until February to hopefully reach a um, global settlement on all years. Um, well, and on, on this, this uh, particular 2009 and 2010, and 10, to be con concluded with the others. With the, with the others in February, that's what I was requesting. Uh, now, the, your applications for 2009 and 2010, are you proposing in January to give us additional February. testimony on the other years? Oh, I was hoping that we can just. Re, uh, reach a, a stipulation with the um, tester for all years. Sessor, do you have a, uh, an objection or do we need to go forward with this now? The applicant postponed previously a few months ago because they provided information on the Friday before the appeals hearing and we postponed. Um, I reviewed all the information and there wasn't there wasn't enough information to substantiate a reduction. And as of today, they still haven't provided something that was, that substantiates their request for basically 10% of the assessed value. So you're prepared to go forward on these two applications now? Yes. Okay. And going back to the applicant, uh, why should we, uh, in other words, why is this so in, entwined with what you propose to bring up and another application. In other words, I'm, I'm a little confused. These other years, have you filed applications on them? Yes. And that you think they're going to be coming up in January? Well, they're going to be coming up shortly, and so we wanted to basically address all the years at one time because it's going to be every, the issue, I understand. industry issue is going to be on. So all the issues are, are entwined with year to year? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, do you have the applications on these other years? And, and when do you propose that they, they were going to come up? They just filed those applications, I believe it was August. Well, those for August was for the 2005, 6, and 7, and 8 years. 2011 was appealed in November of 2011, and, and 2012 was appealed in November 2012. And they're all timely? They're all timely, yes. We should note that um, there, there have been two postponements in the case so far. On this, on this, uh, on the current two applications? Yes. So one's been by the applicant and the other one by the assessor, or both by the applicant? Both by the applicant. Well, I think the last one was we were both in agreement to defer it. Okay. All right. But either way, I mean, I'm just trying well, to consolidate it. <laughs> rather than to hear any, um, we, we need to wind up making this decision as to whether we're going to uh, postpone this or hear this case at the time. So at this time, so I'll, I'll leave it to, well, let me ask, is there any other issues that you can think of, Barbara, that it's we need to consider? It's within the discretion of the board. Yeah. Our, our rules provide for postponement requests by parties and then the board can say yes or no and if you say no they have to be prepared to go forward right now right That's what our rules say and uh, what is the board what's your feelings should we go ahead and hear this case or continue it <coughs> I can understand the um, the concern or the request to try to consolidate everything into one if, if that's if that's essentially what's going to happen, I'm, I'm with two postponements already, and it doesn't sound like we received quite the information that the county was looking for in terms right. of needing a. So a even if we hear this case now, 
uh, we can continue it if we feel as though there's a reason to do that at the conclusion of hearing this evidence. Or we can go ahead and proceed with these two applications now. So maybe we ought to just go ahead and proceed, hear the application, and uh, determine whether we need additional information which would be forthcoming in the other applications. That seem reasonable? That's fine. Okay. Is that okay? Very good. Then go ahead and present your case and uh, we'll uh, uh, basically allow you to present your case, then allow the assessor to cross-examine, uh, then you can address their additional concerns and then a summary. So if you'd like to go ahead and start off with the presentation of the case. Okay. Well, as I, as I stated, um, uh, Fruit Patch um, um, is a tree fruit um, packing and sales um, company uh, located in the um, Dinuba area. Um, the, um, the site is basically on 35.93 acres, um, 1,565 square feet. Um, they um, have basically not made a lot of improvements in the, in the, in the site. Um, they, obviously the tree fruit industry, uh, we provided some support in here. Um, there have been eight facilities that have shut down in the Tulare County area um, and either for sale or have gone bankrupt. Um, the, the, the growers are pulling out acreage, significant amount of acreage in the tree fruit industry and replanting them with uh, citrus or um, almonds because um, it's just not a, a viable um, crop anymore and there's been an oversupply and so it, you know just in general um, there's been a significant decline in, in economic obsolescence on the on the property there um, the property in fruit patch itself is is primarily around um, at this point it's 995 it's you know 17 years old or 15 years old back in, in these years and you know there's a lot of excess equipment that's on the market today um, with all these facilities that are for sale and have shut down. And the technology that has evolved in the tree fruit industry is, um, you know, enhancing and um, equipment from the, you know, 1995, that time period is just not the latest and, and greatest equipment with you know, scanners and optical sizers and everything else has, you know, been, been evolved over the years. Um, the, the amounts that we have indicated for our valuation uh, we're basically just, you know, 10% to preserve our right for the appeals. Um, we submitted um, and have been working with the assessor um, to basically for what we felt was a, a, a more appropriate reduction um, for 2009. We've requested from 23 million, we requested a, a basically a 5 million, uh, it was, it's in the documents here, 5 million, uh, 12,959 dollar reduction so that would basically bring it down to about 18 million dollars and for 2010 we've requested a reduction of two million nine hundred thousand zero eighty eight uh, again bringing that down to about 18 million dollars um, that's primarily based upon uh, com you know comparable uh, sales um, for other facilities um, that are for sale I, don't, I, I agree that for these particular years, there were no sales within the 90-day periods, but for the other years, you'll see there will be sales that have occurred within the 90-day period, but still these, these, these facilities are up for sale. Most of them are selling about three to five million dollars for the entire facility. I mean, this is a significant reduction that's been taking place in this industry. And um, it's just, you know, it's just not supported with the valuations. That's, that's on, on the roles currently being assessed. Um, part of our determination of um, a, re a re reduction in value, which we thought was very um, conservative, was based upon the fact that the facility itself and, and what has really, the use of the facility has been a decline in value. The, the, the um, fruit patch has no um, products of their own that they pack. They are all outside growers, and their their production has decreased more than 50 percent since the pre-2009 levels. Um, we provided a schedule in here that shows their annual production of, of, of fruit that is basically going through 
through the facility from 2005 to 2012. And as you see, in 2005, the total volume of boxes that they were packing uh, was at 11,844,000. In 2007, it was at 13,375,000. Um, for the years 2009, which we're appealing, it's 5,361,000. For 2010, it's 5,741,000. And then for 2011, 2012, which are not current years, but as you can just a dramatic decrease here, you'll see is 2012 is down to 1,531. Basically, the company is about ready to shut down. And um, it is, is currently still running. It's still currently running at 1,531, but you can see there's been a 90% decrease in volume um, at this facility. Is and, this a co op? No, it's not a co op. It's, it's, it's um, privately owned. And so. You know, there, there obviously is you know, not only just the, um, the, the industry that the, the company is in, um, there's, there's obviously from an income, state, this income approach standpoint, there's a significant reduction in the value of that facility, um, because especially with regards to the you know, numerous facilities that are on the market um, currently for sale that have not been sold or have been sold at basically, you know, prices of, you know, 10% of this amount. So, you know, we've, we feel that $18 million is more than fair um, as far as, as valuation, and that's the number that the, um, the applicant would sort of accept. And we were hoping to reach a stipulation with the uh, assessor around that number um, for this year, as well as all the other years that are under appeals. Uh, now, I'm, I'm a little confused. Uh, it's got on our application 2009-01428, the uh, applicant's uh, assessment of value of $2.3 million. That was purposes of just when we filed the appeals, since at that time we have not gone through a formal evaluation. Um, I see. And so that was basically just to preserve the appeals right. And so s subsequent to that, we've, we've kind of gone through our analysis and have come up you know, and for both years are around $18 million. For the land and equipment. For the personal property. I don't think the real property we're um, under, we're, we've, we're. You know, there, this is not regarding uh, real property. Not, not, the, not the land, no. I think Mr. Zunian, we've spoken with Fruit Patch and they verbally stipulated the real property values were fine. Oh, in other words, that issue. Now, again, what is the real property? It's this, this figure that we're hearing around $18 million, is for the personal, personal prop property. Business, personal business property. Yes. That's, isn't that everything? We'll agree to that. Because the value on the roll is $23 million. Yeah. Yeah. If you take out the, if, when I look at application 2009, we have 130000 in land, $9.5 million in improvements for structures and 11,000 in improvements growing. Yeah, that's, that's correct. I'm sorry, Ms. The, the, the adjustment that we were looking at for the, for the 5 million and the 3 million were, were, um, were only for the personal property but, component. Yeah. Now, when, just, to, just to clarify for the clerk's purposes, when we report the ultimate decision of the board to the tax collector, the staff needs to list it in exactly the five categories that it's listed on the, on the roll. And your application, I believe, I believe your applications describe what is on the roll accurately. And so we need to know what value the parties think the land is, what value the parties think the improvements and structures are, the improvements growing, the improvements fixtures, and the personal property. We need values in all five of those categories. The schedules so for two, to 2009 and 2010, do you, do you see that? I have a 2010 document. <clears throat> and My understanding is the land values are not contested. <clears throat> what about me? improvement structures, improvements growing? Yeah, it looks like they're just appealing the fixture value and the personal property value. That if you correct. just add those two numbers together and compare it to their worksheet, mm -hmm. those are the, just the two values that they're, that they're appealing. Okay, so you, the parties are stipulating on the land the improvement structures and the improvements growing. Growing, right. That's correct. And so then we're going to want values split between improvements, fixtures, and, and personal property. We don't, 
you need to, you can't lump them together for us. You need to split those out and tell us what you want in each of those categories. And that's true for both parties. On, you have on to this, report it to the tax collector that way. On the schedule here, like for 2009, the, thir the 13, the 23 million of that number, 9.6 million dollars is the real property value. So the 13 million dollar, 13.5 million dollars, is the um, assessed value on the other components that we're appealing. Right, but we need you to, we need both parties eventually for us to split those out into improvements, fixtures, and personal property so that we know what to report to the tax collector. You don't have to do it this morning, but okay. eventually we'll need that. Okay. Well, uh, any other questions by the board members? Then I'll go ahead and let the assessor present their case, and then we'll have some questions, I'm sure. Uh, one other one other point real quick is that uh, we've been obviously going back and forth with the assessor and our, the response that we got back to she I believe they thought we were an orange packing facility which that industry was significantly higher fruit patch went into that market I believe in 2010 they, they spent a, um, a million dollars or so on a, on a piece of equipment that went to go into that um, business that also was doing pomegranates uh, waxing um, they didn't have a program for doing citrus um, and they only had one grower um, in 2010, and they lost a lot of money on it and have basically almost shut that, that down. Just because the industry does well doesn't mean that a particular packing house does well. They don't have the salespeople to, to basically sell that product. Um, well, so you, you're alluding to a question that I had I was going to hold back, but I'll just go ahead and ask it now. What else can this plant be used for? Can it be used for citrus to, uh, now? The citrus has its own type of equipment, and so that basically they, they, they would, there's one piece that's there, but the tree fruit is actually, tree fruit packing equipment is only for tree fruit. Right, I understand. And so you can't really pack um, cherries on it, you can't pack um, citrus on it, you can't pack almonds on it. Um, so, you know. And if the, if the question is, is what's the value of the equipment that is tree fruit only, then that's... You're, what you're saying is, is that, with the exception of uh, of uh, tree fruit, that that the equipment is useless. Pretty much, yes. Okay, that's what I was. Didn't thinking. you just state that you <clears throat> put a million dollars into citrus packing? The citrus, they they, they bought a, a piece of equipment in 2010 that they were going to they expanded into the citrus area, but but it was it was they only had one grower and and they haven't really that that. Um, hasn't really expanded for them. They spent a million dollars on equipment for one grower? Well, they were going to grow into that. and they, they, In 2011, they maybe had gotten three or four. But, you know, as of currently, they're, they're, they're questioning whether that is going to basically be. They don't know what the company's going to do. It may actually shut, just shut down. But, you know, they're But they're the basic to, structure could be converted into a citrus packing it, house. It, the, the real estate, yes, it could. But, but not, the, not the personal property that's used for the tree fruit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then... Uh, Go ahead. Well, at this time, if, if that concludes your presentation, yes. then go ahead and have the assessor present their case. <coughs> okay. Um, I did have a question um, directed to legal counsel about the packet that Fruit Patch submitted. There are two separate areas in their packet that contain newspaper articles. Um, and while hearsay is admissible, my understanding is that the substantive content in newspaper articles is not admissible hearsay. <laughs> well. I don't think it is. People sure. try to do that all the time, and they go, here's a newspaper article. Yeah, the, and the, um, I haven't obviously stopped to read these. Right. This board can take hearsay for substantive reasons. I understand that, but my understanding is that the content of a newspaper article is not considered um, admissible. At, for purposes of the information it's attempting to impart. But, but that's the definition of hearsay. Correct. And we can take hearsay, so we can take newspaper articles to the extent that we consider them of assistance. Now, 
I think there's I think spe there's there's specific case law on the the substantive content of newspaper articles and so um, I just wanted to throw that out there in terms of actually reading and looking at that for for the moment we'll note the objection and okay. and we'll have to deal okay. with that later. I don't okay. have time, to, obviously, because now to stop and research that. Even if it's hearsay, there has to be appropriate foundation to admit them. And uh, I don't see uh, appropriate foundation for that either. So I wanted to put that on the record as well. Uh, we provided USDA reports, too. So I don't know if that's considered hearsay or not. I wouldn't think so. but. Right. Um, Fruit Patch had an audit completed in June of 2012, which covered the 2009 and 2010 lien dates that are in question. The cost approach to value was used with age as an indication of depreciation. The auditor noticed that the packing facility was um, newer in comparison to most packing facilities in this area, and um, the equipment was maintained. Uh, percent good and index factors issued by the State Board of Equalization were applied to the cost of the trade fixtures and personal property. If you go to page five of the handout. Um, there's a breakdown of the various equipment. Uh, there's items that you can see such as security and surveillance equipment which would have no bearing. Um, as far as economic obsolescence, forklifts, communication, lab equipment, and then office equipment. And then of course there is the pack lines, the cold storage, et cetera. In 2006, there was an 80% stock sale with a step up in basis. A step up in basis indicates that the company was worth more than what it was on the books upon the transfer of stock. This is outside the lien dates, but the reason I bring this up is because just a few years prior, the property was worth more in the eyes of the investors than what the assessor's office was assessing or what was on their books. In 2008, Fruit Patch added a new pack line that costs approximately $2.4 million. This was added seven to eight months before the 2009 lien date. And my understanding per the application was that the applicant was requesting their total value, including land, real property, all equipment, to be less than the 2.4 million that was invested just seven to, eight month, seven to eight months prior to the lien date. Um, the other pack lines and fixed equipment were purchased for over $12 million and are assessed at approximately 67% for the 2009 and 2010 lien dates. Um, although Fruit Patch did begin in 1994, uh, they have added equipment over the years, so a lot of their equipment is not old. Um, even 1994 in packing equipment isn't necessarily old when it's maintained. Fruit Patch supplied an outside appraisal with a valuation date of December 31st, 2008, which is right in line with the 2009 lien date. The, the appraisal valued the real property at $15,860,000. That was real property only. That didn't include any equipment or trade fixtures. Um, so basically, the appraisal came in at $6.2 million higher than what we had on the roll. And the reason I bring this up is because the applicant is arguing economic obsolescence, but that would affect the total value of the property, the whole plant, not just you know one or two items. Um, an appraisal was also provided by the applicant from October of 2005, which, which included all the property um, trade fixtures, equipment, everything there, and it came in at $25 million. And I have that on page 12. I just put the relevant pages in there.
Even though there have been fluctuations in the eco economy, according to the USDA's National Agricultural Statistics Survey, some of the fruits that are processed at Fruit Patch have had notable production increases, indicating that any fluctuations in prior years are not permanent economic obsolescence. If you go to page 17 and 18, these are some of the fruits that are packed at Fruit Patch. Kiwi fruit had an increase of 79% in California. Blueberries went up 46%. Plums went up 36%. Nectarines, 24%. And then on page 18, you can also see some of the um, fluctuations in value. Fluctuations are a normal part of the farming industry and do not constitute a reduction in equipment value. This can be seen from the charts on, in Exhibit D on page 15. It's normal for the market to go up and down from year to year, but overall, production is trending upward for the subject years. And this is fruit and nut production in California. The applicant is partially basing a 90% requested reduction, which was my original thinking, in market value on other packing houses in the San Joaquin Valley Valley going out of business. The other packing houses are not comparable to that of Fruit Patch. Um, most were older properties with outdated equipment, and a lot of them were for citrus packing, not for stone fruit packing. Fruit Patch, per the company's website and visits by the assessor's office stat staff, is a state-of-the-art facility with new and upgraded equipment. And you can see on page 29 and 31 where they state that themselves. And then lastly, um, since the focus was on fixed assets during the audit, we obtained limited information on income. But on the very last page of the handout, it's Exhibit G. Um, you can see that their, in, their retained earnings increased by $7.8 million in 2009. And I'm sorry about the copy. It's a bad one to start with. So basically, their retained earnings balance, which is the accumulated net income, was $15.7 million at the beginning of 2009 and then they added $7.8 million in that one year. That's about a 50% increase in one year, and that's profit. So to argue that their company is going under seems kind of unreasonable considering in the years in question, they had probably record high income. Also, um, because we could not come to an agreement, I'd requested that they obtain an outside appraisal like they had done in the past um, so that we could come to a reasonable conclusion. They did not want to do that. They said that their opinion of value was all they needed. Um, unfortunately, they aren't appraisers, and so I don't think that's that they've given something to substantiate their opinion of value. Um, we could do the cost, we could do the income approach to value and compare it with the cost and market value. Um, even though they provided some sales, there isn't anything to say that those are comparable sales. So at this point, we just do not have anything that substantiates a reduction. That's all. Um, I, I have a, a question or two, uh, but so that you don't lose your train of thought. 
Would you like to rebut what the assessor has just come up with the pre their presentation? Um, well, firstly, um, the fact that you know she mentioned that there are other facilities were older facilities that's not true. Um, ZNS um, ZNM Fresh is a it was a brand new facility that was put in in Tulare County, and it's it's part of the comparable sales that we did here, um, and they spent you know tens of millions of dollars uh, revamping that facility, and it basically sold, I know this is not within the period that we're looking at, but you know, in, in, in 2011 for $3.7 million facility. In what year? In one year, yeah. No, and there's, what there's, year was that? In 2011. And you know, there's other comparable sales in here, and I, you know, I have to go back and look, but I think that a lot of them are newer, for maybe some older ones, but um, you know, again, this is 1995, that ma majority of the equipment was placed in. Yes, there was equipment being over the years, but the majority of what we're talking about was 1995 equipment, which is fairly old. Um, you know, especially taking into account, there's a lot of facilities, you know, for sale during this time period, and, and that equipment is, is on the market. So when it, these facilities are sold, if they're basically going to be changed over to a different, um, um, for example, like on Valentine, um, which is a large packing house, they basically made that a cherry facility. They took out all the tree fruit equipment and then put in, you know, cherry um, equipment. Um, she mentioned blueberries. I don't believe they do any blueberries. Uh, they don't, I know they don't pe pack any blueberries at that facility. Kiwis, I mean, it must be a very small percentage of, of what they do. Um, and, you know, I could say the citrus was probably 30,000 boxes. Um, you know, if we go basically look, um, and, you know, and we're not disputing that in the years 2005, 2000, you know, those earlier years, and that when, when basically there was a purchase of the facility and there was a step up in value, um, at that time there was 11, you know, there was 11 million packages, almost 12 million packages in 2005. 2006 had 11 and a half million packages. 2007 had 13.3 million packages. Then it decreases down to 9.2 million, and, and in, two, in, in 2009 is 5.3 and, and, and 5.7. So, you know, we're we're at over over almost 70 percent decrease from their peak in 2007. They the company has had a write down of the goodwill that was recorded um, on, on their books. I'm not sure what this net income is on here. That doesn't, admit, that must, it doesn't make any sense to me what that, that number is. It must be something else that's going through there. I haven't seen that before. Um, but, you know, I guess, in, in, you know, it, we're looking at the years 2009, 2010 here, and as evidenced by their, their volume, you can see there's been a dramatic decrease the USDA reports that we brought up show there has been a, a decrease in acreage uh, in, in their primary crops are peaches and nectarines, and primarily peaches and, and then some plums. Um, those are the three primary products that they, they, they do. Now, probably 80% of the volume relates to those three commodities, mm -hmm. primarily peaches. So, I mean, there, there's, there's, there's purely evidence that the acreage the growers have taken out, you know, tens of thousands of acres of peaches and, and, and plums and have replaced them with citrus and almonds. And that's, that's common. So, I, you know, the USDA has supported that. So, again, I haven't seen where these other numbers are coming from as far as maybe yield or something like that off of what's there, but there's definitely been a decrease. Now, in your analysis, and, and we haven't had a chance to go through all of this, but I'm just going to ask you, did you uh, use uh, an income approach uh, or a cost approach, market approach, as far as we, what the... We sort of took a little bit of combination of both because we took well, what, what the comparable sales were. And then ultimately how we came up with the numbers was based upon, I would say, more of the income approach because it was based upon their volume decrease. Now, going, going to that, does the company charge their growers so much a box to pack they charge, they basically make their revenue through packing, and then they also make it through sales. They have none of their own products. So they, they do, do pick up a sales commission. They do pick up a sales commission. So basically, um, the majority of their, their income is, is, is packing income. Okay, so, so, so everything it, is based upon the boxes that go through the so facility. So in your analysis, did you use the uh, sales commission income or only the packing Income. They would both be affected by the decrease in volume because as the boxes, I understand, but yeah, I'm saying in your analysis both, in here, both. is both incomes included? Yes. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. 
Any other questions from the board on members? your uh, equipment here? How much of this equipment is dedicated to the stone fruit? Um, ninety percent. Ninety percent of it. Is yeah. Again, because you know, more eighty to ninety. In what way? Is your cold storage is that in? The Again, eighty to ninety percent. The the, the, the t other pieces of or other types of commodities that they pack, such as you know the kiwis, is very small. Citrus is only thirty thousand boxes in two thousand and, and, and ten. There was no boxes of citrus in two thousand nine or before, um, and you know there there is no blueberries as far as I know, and there's no cherries, there's no almonds. Um, and, you know, so again, it's, it's primarily the stone fruit, which is the majority of, of their um, back boxes. Can I ask you a question? Why would you build a packing house if you haven't got onto your own fruit? Um, they're, they're, um, we're, we're the accountants for the company, so I didn't build it. <laughs> but they're they're basically a um, um, their 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 approach was to basically have growers and to basically um, make an investment in in a facility um, that's in the free fruit arena. They 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 were purchased by a large um, company. They were originally started um, by uh, a local f a farmer here in Valley. And then sold it, um, but they're no longer part of that. Um, this company. is a subsidiary of a larger company. Is that what yes. you're telling? It is a subsidiary. Then, what is the parent company? American Capital. American Capital. Capital yeah. What they're, are they out of? Uh, basically, out of um, an, um, Delaware. Delaware. But they're owned twenty percent by uh, the still by the family here in in um, Dinuba. For how much of it? Twenty percent is owned here by. The family here in Dinuba that started. Twenty percent is owned by the eighty percent is owned by the other company. American Capital, yeah. American Capital. And you're on behalf of them. We're on behalf of Fruit Patch, the, the actual company. Yeah. I noticed in here too, you had a lot of equipment. <clears throat> Not have to go over this thing, but did you put your farm equipment in here too. There's no farm equipment on. There's, there's no none? significant. They're basically could be trailers. I mean, that haul the fruit from the growers, the outside growers, into into the um, company, but there's no tractors, there's no, um, they don't do any, any farming themselves. Uh, <clears throat> I'm looking at the, uh, the, the county's report. It's actually just a printout from the USDA uh, California Fruit and Nut Review. I don't know if you have a copy of that or not, which lists the bearing acreage of 2010, 2011. Uh, and you see the primary products that are packaged here are peaches and plums, basically. Peaches, plums, and nectarines, yes. Okay. Uh, according to the USDA, uh, this review, there's not much decrease in acreage. I don't, well, of course, we don't have 2009 numbers, but 2010 to 2011, there was a slight decrease. But you're referring to your information that shows a substantial decrease. Could you point that out to me? Um, the USDA economic <clears throat> the articles that passed out as well, too. You're looking at a USDA, not the state of California, is that correct? Um, yeah. Yes. That is for the entire nation, or is this California? It's for California. Why is the differential between the California statistics? That's what I don't understand, because it's the first time I've this seen. I don't understand that either. <laughs> so, is it this one? That you're referring to? <clears throat> all I know is my family's from Reedley, and I drive by there all the time, and I see that all the tree fruit that <laughs> ranches that are there have been taken out, and they're going into these other commodities. So, I mean, it's it's not uncommon knowledge that it's basically these acreage of tree fruit is is being removed in the valley here. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't see that in that California Fruit and Nut Review report, the decrease that. Plums, there's a 200 acre decrease in, from 2010 to 2011. Peaches, there's a 2,500 acre decrease. 
nectarines, there was a thousand acre decrease from 2010, 2011. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to kind of go through and, and kind of sort this report and out. And again, we don't have... This is, this is their production, though, on their particular facility, is, is the, the, their boxes that they're basically generating their revenue from. So this is an, obviously this is an industry trend that we were looking at, but this is their Pacific case, their boxes. Yeah. Could it be a management problem? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> I really don't think that the acreage, I mean, I, I'm trying to, to reconcile these. I, I know personally that the, 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 there is that there is the industry problem. So I'm trying to figure out the, <laughs> if, if this. In, in. You have a letter in here from the Packer uh -huh. regarding George Brothers. And I just happen to know them mm -hmm. fairly well. They've been farming uh, in the Sultana area for 50 years. And uh, they went through something similar, what you're talking about. They were in the tree fruit business. Um, but what, what's happening from what I can gather is, is that, as you're alluding to, is, is that as one area decreases, another area picks up, like the nut business and the citrus business. And it appears that your testimony indicated that they have that intent if they had the opportunity to switch to citrus if they switch to citrus or almonds or whatever else made money that they could economically make that transition we're going through a period now where in effect i think that the, that a lot of these commodities whether it's the milk business or whether it's the uh, uh, tree fruit business or the almond business they're all going through a great deal of change now uh, why wouldn't they, and, and they've made the attempt but uh, why wouldn't they be have been more successful in getting into, let's say, more citrus earlier? The um, the thing is that they don't. They they actually tried. They actually had you need growers to do that. So they don't have. It's difficult to get growers because they don't have a proven track record in that industry. Um, they don't have the sales force. They don't have the the contacts with the buyers of of you know. So they may have Costco Costco as a as a as a as a buyer for their tree fruit. But Costco may not come to them for citrus because they need a lot of volume. And so since right now they can't provide that volume because they're starting ramping that up, you're not going to get the big chains to come in and, 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 and commit to anything. Now, with the additional information from the additional years that you're suggesting that would affect this, how would that affect these years? How would it affect these years? Well, In other the, words, prior years or the, or the year after? Well, you can definitely see the years after would be, you know, further decrease over over time uh, as far as not the volume. A, not an increase. Not, no, not an increase. They're down to 1.5 million boxes. Okay. So in other words, the other, than, other than worse. some kind of an analysis that would be needed, uh, what you're saying is, is that by showing the additional years, you're showing a trend? Yes. Okay. That's what I want. And it's not like a, it's not like a one-time blip in this particular year that's going to go back up. I understand. I mean, this I is an industry problem. Um, you know, and there are many companies like Giannini, um, Edo Packing, you know, Ballantyne, they're all shutting their facilities down. People that have been farming, for, you know, people have been in tree fruit business for, you know, 60 well, years. You know, I, 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 I was born and raised in Dinuba. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people that you're talking about, I have known from, an, from a, just a outside situation. Uh, they've been there, a lot of them have been there a long time. Yeah, and especially the George brothers uh, in Sultana. But going back to the assessor, after if you have any any additional information you'd like to present to us, um, no. Okay, then why don't you go ahead and respond to their additional information, and uh, then we'll proceed. Okay, um, I just want to make a couple of points. First of all, if some of the stone packing, stone fruit packing um, companies went out of business, that would leave more market share for a fruit patch. So it doesn't necessarily mean because other fruit packing facilities that do related fruit have gone out that that's necessarily a bad thing because Go on. there there is um, certain amounts of extra fruit that would then be available for fruit patch to pack. Also in the 1231-08, or I mean 2008, um, appraisal 
by a third party, it's stated in there that the overall quality of the facility is considered above average. And it's also stated that the improvements continue to contribute value to the property and based on our analysis, the existing use is financially feasible. That was as of the day before the 2009 lien date. Therefore, it's our opinion that the highest and best use of the subject property as improved for continued use as a fruit processing facility. I had a question. Are you competitive? Huh? Your facility competitive with the other producers? Yes, it is. In the stone fruit business, don't most of these growers change varieties? In other words, one variety is no longer economical, but they'll replant to a different variety of stone fruit? Um, my family's in the tree fruit business, um, and so it, and from that side, I, I can speak as a grower, um, we, uh, we do change varieties, but not that often because um, it, it obviously takes an investment to do that. You, you, you usually would graft, but you normally would have to graft to, you know, similar to a peach, you know, to another type of a peach. Yes. But in order, if you're going to go into an almond or go into a citrus, you have to take everything out and then redevelop the whole, uh, par whole property. Now, that is what Paramount is doing uh, with regards to buying in a lot of like the George Brothers land, they're, they're basically putting in citrus. Well, that's there. the business they're in. Yeah, they're, so they're they're in the citrus business, yeah, the so. almond business, and the pistachio business. Yeah. Most, don't they're most of the general growers they'll go to a different variety, and it's a, what is it, a three-year turnaround? Um, yeah, they go to that, but then you have like PNR that went in, that basically took all their all their um, tree fruit land and made it into almonds. So depending on what you know what what the grower. Um, you know, it has done. Also, the growers, um, again, speaking from a grower standpoint, it's 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 a, it's they're having problems themselves because the market for tree fruit is is not, you know, kept up with the cost. And so there are many growers in the tree fruit industry that are not making money. There are tree there are almond growers that are making a lot of money, and a lot of citrus growers are making money, but the tree fruit growers are not. So it's just a, a blanket problem across the whole industry. Well, I have a question. This this last page, who, where did this come from? That was given to um, my office by the taxpayer when what they were doing the audit, and I believe um, Mr. Booz is the CPA for. No, that. we don't do. We just do the property tax. We don't. Do, oh, I see. We don't do the accounting or the tax return. So I haven't seen that before. You're not familiar with this. And they have a lot of. They have a, from a book standpoint. They have a lot of. Um, book up and book down adjustments for their, their um, stock acquisition, so I'm not. This shows a net income of almost $8 million for 2009 tax basis, I'm assuming. It's off an M2 schedule, so it'd be, well, they're reconciling. Yes, yeah, it's, it's weird because it also shows a negative other current. Oh, that's a, that's a decrease. <coughs> yeah, I, I, I haven't looked at that. It looks like it. it's a consolidated tax return or combined, and it looks like the segment it, for fruit patch is almost an $8 million net income for 2009. So this, but it doesn't make sense because there's a $10 million overall net loss, so I don't... Yeah, what's that? Well, I understand there's $18 million <clears throat> in this, F, you know, this holding corp, so it's something that would have to be looked at a little bit more is what makes up those numbers. In a situation like this, we are oftentimes uh, given a huge amount of information that we can't possibly go through at the, at the um, hearing. Uh, and we can continue it or we can conclude it and then try to study this and come up to a decision in, uh, in closed session. Um, but if um, you're still under the impression that we need to hear, or we would benefit from hearing the ad additional information that is in these other applications that are coming forward. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. And the uh, assessor's position is, is that, that these applications could stand on their own and we could make a conclusion from this information that's here. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct, Mr. Chairman. And in addition, actually, the applicant wanted to reach a global settlement, he indicated, with the other years. Right. And so I believe that's something they will still be seeking 
And so we'd like this to stand on its own if possible. Uh, I bring it back to the board. Uh, we can, now here again, this is supposition maybe a little bit on my part is that I'm assuming that the additional information that you think will affect this case is going to be ready to be heard in January or February. Uh, I don't want to continue this uh, or we may want to continue it or we may best take it uh, under advisement and consider it in on its own merits and that's what I'm going to ask the board here in just a moment. But in effect, uh, this isn't, in your opinion, going to stretch to July, August, and September of next year. No, and, and, and you know, I, I think by looking at some of these issues or reconciling at USDA reports, I'd like to look more into that and then look into this and right. some of the open issue questions that we have and then kind of provide you the information for the other years, show you the breakouts between the different commodities and, and, and sort of how that's working. Then uh, from our standpoint, we need to determine whether we're going to conclude the evidence being presented or uh, continue it until our Jan January or February meeting. And I'll leave that up to the board. Uh, what does the board members want to do? Is there a 2010-2011 balance sheet available? We were not provided with that. I only had the one for the 2009. Can we be provided with you that? can be provided by the next hearing, yes. Not right. today. I don't have, I don't have we'll it. Put it on me. continuation until we get And uh, Mr. Morris? Yeah, I'm just not seeing a lot of <clears throat> some information to substantiate your, your typically we'll see an appraisal, we'll see an income approach, some other things. I'm having a hard time reconciling those things. I, I, I don't see enough evidence at that point. I don't know if that additional will help or, or not. Uh, I do need some time to digest this for sure. Yeah, and, and I, I feel the same way. My, my feeling leans to continuing uh, at least for a month. So well, I can and, go through the information. Yeah. And then so that we're, uh, if there's any additional information you'd like to have the applicant bring forward in their next meeting, uh, now is the time to, to specify. But in effect, what it amounts to is, is that I, I just don't, uh, I would definitely like to go through this material uh, and uh, there may be, depending on what the other board members want to do, some additional information that would help be helpful. That's really the question. So the, the formal continuance then would be to a specific date and you would ask the parties to bring back specific information that you want additional evidence on. Right. <laughs> would be then the time to tell them what you want them what additional evidence do you want? And Mr. Fowler, you've, you've alluded to something. Yes, I want to see the uh, current uh, updated uh, balance sheets on this. This is 2009. I'd like to see 2010, 11, and 12 if you can provide it. Well, for, for this hearing, it would only be the, 9 and 10. What, whatever is relevant to January whatever 1st, 2009, and January 1st, right. 2010. And we would also uh, request that. If it's continued to a date certain, the applicant be told to provide updated information to the assessor's office by February 14th because we w we've had a pattern of making multiple requests for information and getting nothing until days before the hearing when we're provided with 200 pages. Right. So we need that information by February 14th. That would that would be if we postpone to <clears throat> if, Feb it's if we continue to February. Yes. You want to continue to January to keep it fresh in your mind? I would prefer that. <clears throat> yeah. okay. If the applicant applicant can give this if, uh, the information to the assessor and and uh, be prepared for our next meeting, which is January what? Twenty eighth. Yeah. It's oh. the fourth Thursday Monday in in January. What is it? The fourth Monday in January, the twenty eighth. Right. January twenty eighth. Twenty eighth. I'll be out of the country. Ooh. We the want, assessor we want has a number panel. of hearings in January. Miss Lee does already, and so um, be better to bump it to February. February. If they're going to provide anything substantive, yeah, probably time for the assessors to review what the information they've supplied and give us an analysis. Yes. Yeah. Is that okay with the? February is fine. Yeah. Okay. And, and what date would you want? The, the date, date with the hearing February is. I don't have down on my February twenty fifth. 
Then we will get the information by the 14th. Yes. Okay, so Copy. the board should confirm that the applicant then is directed to provide any additional information to the <clears throat> By yes. 14th. In effect, uh, uh, what what's the date that the assessor needs the information by? February 14th. 14th. So you have no problem with that? No. Okay. Very good. Then you'll get the information by February 14th, and we'll hear it again on February 25th. Do I hear a motion to continue to February 25th? I'll make a motion that we continue to. February. We have a second. Second. Have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Hearing none, motion carries. So we'll be back on February 25th. Give us a chance to digest this information. And uh, uh, we'll conclude it at that time unless we need to extend, extend it further. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the, the gentleman there that is um, Next, uh, he's with uh, us. are you an? Are you together with the applicant? Okay. So he's not part of another application. Okay. So, uh, and the, the the young lady that's in the back, are you with the assessor? Yes. yes. Okay. So uh, we are back to um, uh, withdrawals, agenda item number five, and. Um, and then we have um, agenda item number six and seven. On agenda item number seven. Yes. I've talked to the applicant and um, he had surgery and postponed previously and now he's having complications from his surgery. And so I was hoping to postpone. You're, you're willing to go ahead and postpone? Um, that on, for our technical purposes, is that it, the, would you prefer to attribute that to the applicant requesting a postponement? Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was an available option. We would, and that, that you find he, good cause based on medical issues. And come. we have the discretion to postpone if the applicant has said that he has an illness and not right. able to attend. In, in future, it would probably be tidier if they were able to talk directly to the clerk about it, but yeah, we'll, we'll trust you on that until we, <laughs> okay. until we have reason not to. Okay, and do you have a uh, uh, date in mind? In other words, is the January meeting okay to postpone to? Um, could we put them on February as well, just because? Fine. And I'm, and I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, I, I missed which one this was. Uh, this seven. is agenda item seven. Seven, okay, thank you. Um, and this is a postponement. Uh, is there any going through the calendar? Is uh, Peninsula Packing uh, agenda item number six? Uh, is that just simply a, a non uh, no, show. no show? Okay. But that's the one that we discussed with the chair beforehand, where they had thought we would just do a paper hearing if they sent in materials. Ah, that's the one. And we have left messages with them. The, the clerk has saying that no, you. You know, if you want us to hear it, you have to actually show up. Um, and they did not respond to those messages. And um, going through the list, uh, agenda item nine is a withdrawal. Uh, 10 through uh, 14, we, the assessor have any information on those applicants? Chairman, those are an assortment of individual issues, uh, like agenda item number 10. Uh, the applicant no longer owns the property and is not interested in pursuing the appeal. Um, we've met the opinion of value on items number 11 and 12. But what was that again? Met the applicant's opinion of value on items number 11. So it's a withdrawal. Uh, not the, we've sent the request to withdraw to the applicant, but they have never responded. So they are denial. It's non, non-appearance. And then the um, item number 13 was simply a change in ownership. It had not been worked by the assessor's office. We've since gone through and worked that, and she is fine with the values that we placed on the property for the change in ownership. And then the item number 14, there was no change in the assessment, and the applicant has never responded to a letter that we've sent them. So. Okay. Um.
then I am assuming that um, the ones that are marked withdrawals, in addition to the withdrawal calendar, we can go ahead and, and uh, have a motion to uh, uh, add those to the withdrawal calendar and accept those as withdrawals, and that these are uh, still a little bit clear, unclear as to uh, from number 10 to 14, are these non-appearances? Those are non-appearances. Non-appearances. Okay. So, uh, depending on uh, agenda uh, item number six, let's take the non-appearances first, I guess. Uh, number six, 11, uh, 10 and 11, 12, 13, and 14. Do I hear a motion to um, yeah. a motion for non appearance on, on those items? Yeah, I make a motion that items, uh, agenda items number 6, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Uh, be denied uh, for non-appearance. you have a second? I'll second it. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Now, going back to, uh, uh, did we have a uh, motion to postpone uh, agenda item number seven, Quinn Rental? We have a formal motion. I can't remember. We had a consensus, but... We did not have a formal motion. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion that we move uh, agenda item number seven, uh, postpone it to the February 2013 meeting. Uh, we have February another 20, one. February 25th. Yeah. February 25th. I believe that there's the, another one, which is one, the one we just heard, which was 18, that we're going to continue. Well, that's a postponement yeah, already, versus a continuation. Excuse me. Yeah. So let's do number seven uh, next. And just to, he's already made the motion, but just to, um, clarify as you recall we just amended our local rules to more clearly address the interpretation of the statewide rules that we will allow the other party to withhold their postponement until later so whenever we do a postponement we'll be indicating whether it's the board's motion the applicant's motion or, or the, the assessors and here it's at the request of the Applicant. So applicant. The assessor still has, I believe the assessor still hasn't used theirs. Okay. Okay. Do I hear a motion to uh, postpone agenda item number seven? I'll make a motion to postpone uh, Quinn Reynolds number seven. Second. To, to February 28th. Right. Uh, yeah, right. You have a motion and a second. Postpone agenda item number seven to February 28th. Uh, all uh, in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. And then going back to again, uh, a motion to uh, continue. No, this is a, we already did that one. We, we did this one. Okay. What you haven't done is a formal one on the withdrawals. Yes. Now that's all that's left. It's just the withdrawals. Except for the closed session, yes. Okay. okay. And, uh, uh, as I understand it, uh, we're talking about agenda item number eight. And five, your, your basic calendar. Yes, the, the, the calendar, agenda item number five, eight, nine, 15, 16, and 17. And 19 and, and 20. And 19 and, and, 20. and 19 and 20. Did you say 15? Yes. yes. Uh, no, yeah, 15, 16, 17 are withdrawals. 19 and 20. Our withdrawals. Agenda number nine and eight. And the agenda item five, which is the calendar. Okay, do we hear a motion to accept those as withdrawals? Yeah, I make a motion to accept uh, the withdrawal calendar, uh, agenda item number five, as well as Id agenda items number eight, nine, 15, 16, 17, 19, and 20 as withdrawn. Do we have a second? A second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All in, uh, opposed? Hearing none, uh, motion carries. 
now. Let me just go ahead and. Before we go into closed session, the Appalachian owners have been, I don't know how much they've asked since our last one, but just for purposes of the updating on them, we might want to announce that we are postponing the deliberations yes. on that. Um, one, one more month. Apple so, 8 is postponing for one more month. Yeah. One more month. And then we'll decide in January if, if, Mr. if McKinley Mr. McKinley still McKinley isn't able to be here not. in January, then we'll have to discuss. I mean, we, we have the ability on that one to bring in the alternate and have a full board. And what's the date of our January meeting? 28th. 28th. So uh, we're going to continue uh, until January 28th, agenda item number 21, and we'll hear agenda item number 22 in closed session today. Is there any other comments uh, from the assessor or uh, our staff? I, I do Thank have you. one. Um, we had another item that your board decided at the last hearing, and I don't remember the name of it now, where the assessor had requested findings and then the board ruled in the assessor's favor. So when staff contacted them after the hearing, um, they said it was they, they waived the findings, and so then, as required in the statewide rules, we contacted the applicant and said, do you want to renew the, the request for findings? And they said no. So that matter, even though findings had been requested originally, was did not come back to your board with findings. Well, well, the no. withdraft findings, as no. both parties waived. Okay, good. Thank you. And I just had a little, like, housekeeping request, which is... Um, as counsel for the assessor, I need to be getting copies of all the materials that are provided to um, the board's counsel on the hearings, and I haven't been getting separate copies, and I really do need them. You're not, you're not getting the, the dockets? No, I have not been given, like, the packets for the hearings, say, from the applicant. I'm not being provided a copy of those, and I really, in are all hearings... Are you sending hearings, over three? Are you sending over three sets? I th you're getting the, the initial package like a week before, though. You're getting those. I'm getting the agenda. What I'm talking about is, for example, the on handouts. today's hearing when the applicants go to hearing. I'm not getting a copy of what's being provided the board and to you, Ms. Grunwald, and um, I need a copy. To, they're supposed to bring eight, eight. I think. Yes. We've, we've had a few short in the last couple meetings, and this meeting I just failed to get it to you. I actually thought Christy had handed you one. I really oh, need no, to be I getting a copy just yeah, as a they're matter They're supposed of to bring, yeah, we'll take care of that. They're supposed okay. to be bringing eight. And, and that, when we count, you know, that includes you. Thank you. We'll be crabbier about it. I'm, I'm just shuffling some paperwork. Any other comments? Did we do a, a formal ruling on 21, postponing it so I can get a minute order to appellate? Uh, that would probably be a good idea. So let's do a, for, a formal motion on 21. Okay, very good. Uh, we're going to continue agenda item number 21 till January 28th. Uh, do we have a motion to that extent? I'll make a motion we move it. Have a second? Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. There being no further uh, business in front of the Assessment Appeals Board for uh, January or December 17th, 2012, meeting is adjourned. Well, except you're doing closed session, but. Yes, we're going to be hearing closed session. The public session. part is adjourned. Thank you. You don't have to wear a jacket to turn the heat out. I know. <laughs> I, yeah, I was thinking that's not a bad idea. To
2012 hearing uh, from uh, the closed session. And uh, we have reviewed the tentative hearings from Pitney Bowes uh, equipment. And uh, we have uh, chosen to uh, accept the preliminary uh, findings. And I'd like to hear a motion to accept the preliminary findings and send them out to the assessor and applicant. Do I hear a motion? Uh, so moved. So moved. Uh, we have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second to, uh, uh, on agenda item number 22, to accept the uh, preliminary findings as submitted and send them out to the assessor and the applicant. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. There being no other uh, uh, results from closed session, the meeting is now adjourned.